we can keep talking, but I'm sure people want to see what you have to offer because I'm sure it's <laughs> probably more fun. Um, so hello, everybody. We are here with Joe from Closet Pro Software. Hi, everyone. Uh, Joe is going to tell us about Closet Pro Software. So off to you, Joe. Okay. Thank you, Sean. So thanks, everyone, for coming on board. I really appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> looking forward to spending a little bit of time with you to uh, talk about Closet Pro and what's uh, what's different about Clouser Pro, um, and so let's get started. So I just have a, a couple pages here on a PowerPoint, and then we'll go right into our, our tool, and I'll do a demo. And, uh, and Sean and I discussed, uh, if you have any questions, just go ahead and type them in. He'll be monitoring those questions, and you guys feel free to interrupt if you have any, anything you want to say. <clears throat> okay, so what is the, so Clouser Pro is cloud-based, so you might think you know what cloud-based solution is, and, and that's fine, and, and uh, we'll just review it real quick just so we're sure everybody understands. Um, so basically, a cloud-based system is something that's hosted on the internet. <clears throat> so like any other website you go to, they, they are cloud-based systems. So when you have a cloud-based system, it can work on, uh, if it's written correctly, it can work on any device. And so our system it responds to the device that you're on, so you can work from your desktop, or you can work from your laptop, or a tablet or a smartphone, as long as you have internet capability. So there you are again with the internet capability as far as being a cloud-based solution. You can be on vacation in the Bahamas or anywhere else, and if you have an internet connection, you can pull up your laptop or your or your cell phone or your smartphone and go ahead and access your Closet Pro account. With a cloud-based solution, there's no software to download. Uh, and so with no software being on your system, uh, it is all residing up on the cloud and therefore updates that we make to Closet Pro are automatic. We do not charge for any updates, <clears throat> excuse me. So everything, every time we have a new version of, of Closet Pro, we will upload that version uh, in the middle of the, of the night. And it'll, when you come in the next day, you'll see there's a new version number on your Closet Pro. If it's a major enhancement, we typically put it behind a on off switch so your system does not look any different but if you want to take advantage of the new of the new feature you just turn it on there are no hard keys meaning like nothing to plug into your machine everything is handled by email and password just like any other website that you go to like Amazon or anything like that the other nice thing about a cloud-based solution is that <clears throat> you can share your uh, designs online and look at them at the same time so that means that a designer can share a design with a customer and the customer can be looking at the same design that the designer is looking at so it's it encourages an, um, interaction between your designers and your customers as well as interaction between your designers and your home office so if you have designers out maybe you have a junior designer out there who maybe is beginning to stumble or doesn't know how to handle a particular feature of a design you in the home office can uh, go online to that uh, designer's account and look at that same design and make some changes. And all they have to do is refresh their page uh, to get your, to apply your changes. And one of the final things that, that a cloud-based solution can do that something that is not cloud-based can do, which is accept credit card payments. So in Closet Pro, you have the ability to accept payments from your homeowners or your dealers. Um, and those credit card payments would be accepted directly inside our tool and sent off to the merchant account and then sent off to your bank. So that is something that is um, viable in cloud-based solutions, but it's not something you can do uh, if you have something that is installed on your own computer. And finally, well, if I can, yes. If I can interrupt on sure. that note, the credit card processing, does it go through your own merchant or would, would we hook up our merchant account into it and then process say through QuickBooks or um, whatever other one we might use? So we support just one, one merchant but it is your merchant account. So, you, so we would direct you to a merchant. It's it's a company called Card Connect, uh, which is part of First Data. So you would negotiate and create your own merchant account with them. And then that software that we wrote with them would be plugged into into a Closet Pro and the credit card payments would go to your account. So we're not taking money for you, if you will, but we're using them as the conduit. Nice. Okay. Uh, and with that in mind, the other cloud-based solution uh, advantages is what's called APIs, which are application programming interfaces. You see that term around. And what that means is that Clouds Pro can talk to other cloud-based solutions. So if you have a, a CRM like um, Salesforce or something like that, uh, those any cloud-based solution typically has uh, plugins or, or interface zones that we can talk to. So, that, so it puts us in a space where we can start to really 
connect to any anybody else who's out there in cloud and and most of your software will be cloud based in the future all right so just a quick uh, recap of what we've seen in the last four or five years as we've been talking to people uh, on how they draw so there's really four levels we found you have a designer who is very handy with CAD CAM software by CAD CAM software which means computer-aided design and computer-aided manufacturing CAD CAM software like CAD Vision or Mosaic or Microvellum uh, very complex uh, very hard to learn um, very difficult to teach. Uh, if you're not an engineer, it's a very tough program to use, but there are the, some of those designers who have taught themselves or, or have an engineering uh, flair to them, and they can sit there and do these uh, complex drawing tools in front of a customer. So those are your kind of high-level designers. The other ones are ones who take measurements with the customer and then come back and struggle through the CAD CAM, and that's usually done after hours or um, on the weekends. Uh, so here you have designers that are either uh, visiting a customer in the morning and then going back home or to their office in the afternoon. So, you know, you're extending that process that much further. Um, and I, also, I talked to a lot of people who, you know, go see customers during a week and then spend the weekend drawing up these designs. Uh, so with Closet Pro, you could probably have a lot happier designers on your staff. The third one would be if you draw by hand, which is incredibly popular, and then send it to a, an engineering a person in your company or engineering staff. That's also uh, used by quite a few of the larger companies. And the problem with this is that there's always mistakes in translation. It's tough to go from a hand drawing to uh, something in engineering and get it 100%. And a lot of times the turnaround time is just too long. Uh, so that sales cycle really extends. And finally, if you're just drawing by hand and then trying to present that hand drawing, um, you know, let's face it, we're in the HDTV world now and everybody wants to be uh, given that 3D environment and that, and that beautiful presentation like they see on TV. So here's some typical pain points we usually hear from customers. One is it takes multiple visits or touches to close the sale. There's no real-time pricing when you're doing something by hand. There's a long delay between uh, taking the measurements and then presenting something to a customer. And then there's a long delay between uh, responding to a customer when changes are requested. And then you have the problem of an unimpressive presentation or rendering of your design. And then of course, problems in collecting money, which, which people don't like to talk about, but that's always an issue where uh, you need to get paid for the, for the work you're gonna do. So let's see how uh, Clouds Pro can solve some of those problems. We can, and we do have customers doing a one-stop sale. So if you're if you're able to draw in front of a customer, which you can do with Closet Pro, then you would be able to uh, potentially leave that first visit with a check uh, or a payment online if you're taking payments online. So it is uh, it's a beautiful tool. It's very easy to use. It's very pleasing for the customer to watch, uh, and you can go uh, immediately from your drawing to a 3D representation. The pricing is all right there. So it's it's very conducive to a one-stop sale. As I said, we do real-time pricing, immediate 3D views. So anytime you're during your design, you can pop into an interactive 3D. You can quickly make changes. So you can sit there with your customer. And one of the nicest things about it is you can um, have your design going and you can kind of see your customer getting a little uncomfortable as that price is starting to creep up. Then maybe you can say to them, well, let's, you know, let's change this drawer section to a hanging section or let's change the color. Uh, to, a, to a color that's a little less expensive, or let's put some of these units up on the wall, that'll save some prices. So it's, it's great to be able to work your design with your customers so you can really feel and sense um, how they're feeling about the price. Online proposals that we offer give customers a full 3D experience. So those proposals that you can send a link to a customer, and I'll show you how this works in a little bit. And they'll be able to click on that link in the email you send them and go right up to a page on the cloud on Clouser Pro that will have your logo on it. It looks just like something coming from your site. And they'd be able to uh, look at the 3D design, look at the design in several different 3D uh, experiences, whether it be a, a 3D picture or walking through the closet interactively or a beautiful render uh, that we generate. The renders we do create, this is something that is, has been probably one of the most popular things we've added to our tool. Um, we have two cloud-based render servers that are there specifically to generate renders. And if anybody out there has had experience with creating renders, first of all, they're kind of difficult to put together because you have to do your lighting and you have to kind of set your scene before you're going to request the render to happen. 
Second of all, if you're doing it on your computer and you request a render, you might as well go get a cup of coffee because it's going to take 15 or 20 minutes to grind away as it tries to build that render. So with us, you can basically set the view you want and then you just request a render. We'll take care of the lighting. We'll take care of, uh, of all that type of uh, positioning <clears throat> and the render will be created on one of our high-speed servers. So within a few minutes, you're going to get an email coming back saying your render is ready and that render gets connected to the job. We also do, for those people who prefer to have some sort of paperwork to look at, we do auto-generated full PDF proposals. In my experience in using other CAD CAM tools, you know, the, the drawing may not be as, once you get used to it, it might not be that difficult, but taking the drawing and getting your snapshots and building your PDF file and all those pieces and then sending and then creating that takes an additional 15, 20 minutes just to put that proposal together. And then, you know, you know, there's always changes. A change comes, you got to redo all the pictures, redo everything, another 15, 20 minutes just to make a small change. It's very time consuming. We have set up in Closet Pro where you can click a button uh, for a proposal and we will go and grab all the, all the tech drawings, the images, all the 3D views. Everything comes pulled into the PDF and is auto created for you. And it takes only a few minutes. And of course, we can conveniently accept payments online. So uh, you don't have to, you know, if you want to, you can take a percentage of your customer's payment online. Um, the customer can, uh, we have it set up both ways where they could just accept a proposal or they can accept and pay for that proposal. And again, you can also do if you have a dealer network, have your dealers pay before they place their order. And with Clouds Pro being as simple to use as it is, uh, sometimes bringing new designers on is uh, painful because if you're using some other kind of design tool or you're asking them to draw by hand, it takes them a lot of time, months maybe, to get to the point where they can really uh, do something proficiently um, and begin to make some sales. This way, um, with Clouds Pro, it's so intuitive, it's so easy, uh, it just looks more fun, uh, the designers can pick it up a lot quicker and you, have, you can add more designers more quickly uh, than before. Joe, on that note, uh, yeah. if I can interrupt again. Sure. Earlier you mentioned that you can have two people using, working in the design with mm -hmm. uh, browser windows and you just have to refresh. Is yeah. there, you can't do two people simultaneously, like a screen share type thing, can you? Uh, no, well, you can. So if you have a if you have an admin account, which is what you have in your home office, and then you have a designer out there and it's at somebody's uh, home, and they're working on this, a master closet and they call you for help, you can open that master closet on your screen, and they can have it open on their screen. You can make a change, and it changes on your screen, and you tell them just refresh your page, and it Got goes it. up to the server and gets the newest page. So in fact, you are working on the same design. You just nice. you know you just have to be careful that you each are not sort of stepping on each other, but if you take turns, you can each actually change the design together. Cool, okay. And then on top of that, the um, we do allow uh, designers to share accounts if they want, and those shared accounts would be, um, you know, if you have a designer who works Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, another one works Thursday, Friday, Saturday, if you wanna have them share accounts and, they're, and they sign on at separate times of the week, that's fine too. Otherwise, you can't really be on the same designer account. So we can't have two designers using the same designer account when they're when they're working just like other tools so let me go ahead at this point let me pop up and just show you what we're talking about here with closet pro i'm just going to go ahead and this is going to be uh a live live on our site so i'm just going to go into our demo account and show you what it looks like so as i log in as a designer i come to my customer page so here I have one customer, Bob Davis, but I can add new customers just by going here. And typically we, re we suggest you do add your new customer first. So you put in the first name, last name, email. Those are really the only three things we require. You can do internal IDs or set up deposits if you're gonna take payments online. And these two numbers here are kind of important. These are where your designer is marking up the customer. Now, some companies use this, some companies don't. Depends on how you have it set up, but if you have a designer out there and there's they're building a closet and in that closet there's a shelf that is set up to cost them ten dollars and this is marked up at 2.5 that ten dollar shelf is going to be a 25 dollar shelf in your homeowner's closet so you can see it's just taking the price and putting a multiplier on it so that multiplied price is the one that's shown while the design is being worked on so let me pop into this customer 
and I can show, and so we have some designs here that we've already been working on, but let's start a new design. We'll just walk through a fairly quick design to show you how easy this is to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and start a closet here. Here's some cl colors that are set up. Now these colors are your colors. If you become a customer, you tell us where you buy your colors, like what company and what colors you use. And we go get the images from those companies and we make 3D skins out of them so that all our 3D is wrapped in the actual color. So it looks very realistic, as you'll see. And you can put colors into different levels if you want to do different pricing, however you want to do that. Here's your hardware. And again, this is all turned on or turned off by you. If you do round rods or hayfalo rods or whatever you might want to do. And then you have floor or wall hung. You can start your design in either or, or, or in either situation, whether it's a floor based or wall hung. Uh, and you can change all these selections later, but we got to start somewhere. And then panel configuration is shared, which is your typical closet organization setup, which is your sharing panels between uh, units. If you want to do double panels, it's kind of like doing casework where you're going to have, you might do it in a garage or you might do it in an office where you're just going to put boxes side by side. So you have that option as well. Next step is to do some options, which you can choose if you know for a fact your customer doesn't like square handles and prefers the crescent handle, you can just select that. So these are options that you could just skip by if you want. Here's where you define your room. So your ceiling height, your top shelf default height, your unit depth, your baseboard notch and depth, and we have other fields here that can be turned on or off based on what you like to do. These additional fields here just to give you some more uh, information for the room that you want, might want to fill out. And then you have the option to pre-fill a closet if you want or not pre-fill a closet. I'm going to pre-fill because it'll go a little bit quicker today and you'll see how that works. Here I am on my drawing screen. Basically, you want to draw your closet by clicking and dragging your mouse. So I click. Once I click, I drop a corner and then I just move the mouse and I drop a corner and I move the mouse and you can do whatever, you know, whatever design you want. It doesn't really matter. The, the important part here is just getting all the walls and you just do whatever you want. Now, if you make some mistakes, which obviously I did, you just go up here to undo, it just removes the each corner, or you can just reset the layout and start again. So I'm just going to make it a simple three wall closet just to keep things moving. Once I draw the walls, then I put in this, the measurements. So Joe, before you get too ahead here, drawing the sure. closet, uh, somebody has a question of, is there a possible way to change the markup for a master closet and a different markup for a reach in? Um, more different markup for a different closet. I guess yeah, there is a way. To... There is a way to do that. Yes, inside. Right. I can show you that. I have to get through this, and I can pop back to that later. But I'll make a note to go back and show you how you can do that. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we have uh, the three wall closet. I'm just going to continue, and now it's going to ask me how I want to use the the walls. And since this is going to pre-fill. It's a little specific, so we want to know whether you're going to use the wall, yes or no. If you're not going to use the wall, leave it as none. If you're going to use the wall from corner to corner, you want to say all. And the fill is intended to be the, the walls that are going to use as much as they can, but stop before they go too far. So that's what the fill's for. So if I did it this way, the units will go fill in this box, and this would be your, your bridge shelf or your filler shelf or your connector shelf. Everybody uses a different word for this. And then these units will be corner to corner. Now, if you'd rather use corner to corner on the left wall and maybe corner to corner on the right wall, you can see how ClausePro will just push things around to get you the configuration you want. If you want to add an island, <clears throat> it's pretty simple. You just pick an island, single side or double side, and say add, and there it is. Comes out at a fairly standard size of 25 and a half. The front depth is set to 14, and a lot of these defaults you set yourself as a customer. So if you typically do 16 inch deep islands, you can make that always be 16. These heights, are, again, are defined by you. The direction, you can rotate it if you want, 90 degrees, and they'll just turn it sideways. And the um, red circle, the red dot, dot line here is actually this number, 24. So this is 24 inches. So if I move this over, I could be 24 inches in front of this unit, in front of this unit. And I can add as many of these islands as I want. And I can, of course, change their size and and just update them. That just makes it a bigger island. And you can do double-sided as well. Let me get these out of the way. And a double-sided island is just like you might think. It's just front and back. And then there's an extra depth here, so front depth and back depth. I'm going to take them off just to keep it simple. 
Okay, let's go into our design. <clears throat> so you can see I'm already, uh, since I'm pre-filling here, we are, we have some units put up here already. So this page here, we call our view all walls page because you can see all the walls, pretty clever. And uh, we have an overhead, wall one, wall two, wall three. So you can see wall one and wall three are going corner to corner. And wall two is actually stopping and it's showing a reserved area of 14, which is the depth of your unit that's in the corner and then a filler shelf of 18. That's what the default is set for this demo. Now you might have a different, you might use 13 inches or 11 or 15. You set those You set those yourself. From this page, you are, already we have a price of 4209. Already we have a, a possibility of seeing it in three day. And from this, let me just pop some clothes on there. So how many times do you have to explain to a customer what this open space is for? Well, now you can kind of show them, well, it's because your clothes are hanging hanging in that open space. That's why you need some open space there. So from this interactive 3D, you have the ability to do all sorts of turning around and looking. You can also do an overhead view and move around within that up and down. You also have the ability to change some of the, so this is a pretty light colored floor. We can go with something a little bit darker or even darker or a piece of carpeting. Your wall color can be gray or white or tan. And if you need even more colors, you come over here and you can say, you know, give me a, I'm, I'm looking for a blue wall and that'd be a blue wall. And the floor might be a, you know, red carpet. That is sexy right there. So you have that possibility. All right, so let's just pop back here for a second. Go back to the design tool. Okay, so uh, let's go. Let's look at some of the tools here. On the right-hand side, here's all your colors. So if your customer already is starting to balk at 4,200, maybe say, you know what? Let's switch. Let's go down to antique white because that'll save you a little bit of money. And all now the price is 3,146. So already they're feeling better. And maybe say, you know, if that's not good enough, maybe we put everything up on the on the wall. So you click the wall button, and what the wall button does is it goes around and it re it changes everything and puts it all up on the wall. Now, if you use any other kind of CAD software, you are redrawing that design. But with yeah, us, that's a cool can, feature. Yeah, with us, you so if you have to do a design and the customer says, can I see it in a wall-based and in a floor-based, instead of doing two designs, you're gonna do one design. You're gonna do this one, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna clone it and rename it. There's a copy, you're gonna come in here, you're gonna go over here, and you're gonna say, put it on the floor. And you now have two designs for this customer, the floor and the wall, two different prices. Okay, so let's go back. So we're on the wall here. The other things you can do, I'm gonna put this back to a darker color because I think it's easier for you guys to see. Joe, if someone has a question, ooh, yes. two questions. Uh, one is, uh, can you do a combination of wall hanging and floor hanging? As in uh, yeah. shelving when on the floor? You, Sure. So in something like this, you would, you would, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but just to show you, you just pop this one onto the wall. So you can go to in each individual unit and just, so one of the really cool things about Closet Pro is you don't touch the vertical panel. So we're, we're figuring all this stuff out. So, you know, these are all just happening and reacting properly. If I change, if I change this unit, I make it deeper. Let's say I make this 20 inches deep and I make it even taller. Let's say I make it 90 inches tall. Again, I'm not, you don't have to change the vertical panel. It's all being changed. And if I look at this wall now, you can see this is a taller panel. These are being dropping right into it. You have a radius bottoms, by the way, on this, if you sell radius bottoms. So you see how that has all figured that out for you. On top of that, let's just do some crown molding over here. And you'll see it's going to wrap intelligently around, as you see. Okay. So now you have crown that'll jump up higher and die into a side of a panel if that's the if that's what's called for. Okay, so I jumped ahead a little bit. Let me go back to view all walls. What was the second question, Sean? Is there another one? Uh, no, it was actually the the Matt who asked. It just kind of clarified what he was uh, oh, questioning about. It. So all good. Okay, so um, so here you uh, the other stuff you can do on the right hand side i kind of jumped and did some already but the flip flipping of the wall or floor the straighter radius panels if you don't provide radius panels you can just set it to straight and then these are going to square themselves up so these ones here are just turned into square panels um, you can do crown you can do base so if you do base it's just going to wrap the bottom 
and you'll, you can kind of see that. Let me just pop in the 3D. You can see it a little bit better. So here you'll see, as I go in here and drop down, you'll see how there's base now wrapped around there. Wow. Nice smooth Simple. base. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and of course, the price is changing every time we do something. So you add base, you add crown, it's all going to change along. This feature here, kind of interesting. This is um, nine different areas that you can change the color. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can do multiple colors. I usually change the edge banding just because that's pretty easy to see. So if I change the edge banding to antique white, what it's going to do is affect the entire room and it's going to put white edge banding or antique white edge banding on your closet. So you can see how that is just taking edge banding and changing the color all the way around. So again, you can do that in a lot of different places. So we have it uh, for vertical panels, shelves, edge banding, drawers, doors, backing, crown, base, and countertops. Now, if you, um, if you do this on this page, it affects the entire room. If you do it on a particular wall, it affects only the wall. And the importance there is if you had an island, and let's say you want to do you know, a white closet and maybe a, a gray island, go into the island and change all these to gray, and then the island is gray and the closet is white. And if you get all crazy with the colors, you can just click the main color chip and it just replaces everything back to where you started. All right, let me take some of these off of here. And you can see I am, this is literally online right now. So you can see it's fast. It's not something, it doesn't take a lot of internet connection. So even if you're, um, if you're concerned about, oh, well, how fast or slow is this going to react? It's very quick. So it's not a, something you need to really uh, worry about. So let's go in and let's go to the next level, really, which is going into a particular wall. So when you're on this wall here, if you click on this pencil, you can see all the things you set originally, the height the top shelf, the fold height, the unit depths. Here's the length of the walls, so you can change those. So if these are just rough estimates and now you decide, okay, now this is really 182, this is 78 or whatever, go ahead and make those changes. If it's a smaller size and you have units on the wall, we will go in there and try to pull some inches out of standard units like double hangs or something like that. And if you need more space, it'll just leave some empty space and you can go ahead and fill it in with what you want. You can also modify the floor plan, which brings you back to here, which allows you to add an island after the fact. So if you, if you decide now you want to do an island, you can go ahead and add an island. All right, so on this wall, you can see R stands for reserved. It tells you how big that is. F stands for filler or bridge shelf or whatever. It tells you how wide that is. Each one of these is just giving you a description of what kind of unit this is. It's a hang bar unit. And there's a couple shortcuts here. So if I wanted to move this shelving unit to the left, I can just click left and it's going to move it one spot to the left. And again, it's going to know, it's going to know what panels it needs. So if I pop this guy up on the wall and I pop the one next to it up on the wall, you can see that they will share a short panel, but they're, the panels on either side of them are going to be stay long, right? If I went ahead and move this one back, the system smart enough to know, okay, now we have a short on this side and these are going to be long because we don't have a, these have to be long in order to catch the thing. So you have a lot of, uh, kind of a lot of closet smarts built into the system. Let's say we want to make a change to, and put some drawers or something in this. So we're just going to swap a unit out. So this is our catalog and it comes with a standard catalog with about 75 or so units. But you have complete control over the catalog. You can turn things off. You can turn things on. You can add new units. You can create your own components, whatever you want to do. But we start you off with this, with these. And they're put in little categories here. So this is your drawer section. These are shelves and then footwear and baskets. So you can see, kind of like I said before, it's, it's, a, it's a pleasing sight. Like it's kind of the way these things zip around. I know it's silly, but, you know, if you're sitting there with a the customer, it's, it's an easy thing for them to watch you do. So if I pick this one here, it's going to pop in and there's your four drawer unit. Now let's say we want to edit that a little bit further. We can customize this unit. And by, when you customize, you then get to each of the parts inside. So I can now pull this out. I can pull these out and have all my parts here. I have my doors. I have my drawer boxes that are turned on. And I can just pop these. Let's say I want to change that from a 10 and three seven and a halves to three tens. Now, we, these say 10 and 8 and 3 quarters, we actually do the 32 millimeter sizes, but just to try to keep things simple for you and your and your customer, we kind of rounded things a little bit, but be assured that these are actually 10.08 when they come out on the cut list. 
And you have scoop boxes. If you want to pop a scoop box in, you just pop a scoop box in. You have baskets and hampers. You have a rod. You have, uh, we do support eight tag hardware items right in the design tool, right into the renders. You can do cubbies. You tell us how many rows, how many columns. And we do vertical plate dividers. And miscellaneous is for your toe kicks. So if you want to change the toe kick, we have five different versions here that you can put. Actually, four, this is probably just a test, four different toe kicks for you to put in there. So with doors, let's say we want to pop doors over this. We can do a double door or single top hinge, bottom hinge. If I do a double door, it's just drag this piece over and let it go. And now if I submit this, it's basically going back into the design. And there you go. Joe, another question is, uh, sure. while you're kind of here, and I'm guessing the answer is yes, it is, do the shelves auto-populate at certain heights, or can you place them where you want? I'm guessing you place them where you want, based on... You place them where, yeah, you place them where you want, exactly. We don't, uh, we're, we're actually going to put in sort of a auto-split, where you can say, put in three shelves and, sh and split them. But right now, you basically drag and pop. You just put them where you want them. By the default, though, if you say, hey, do all shelves, it just will space it evenly? It will, yeah, well, like if you bring in a seven shelf unit, they're going to space them evenly. Yeah, just based on the 32 mil system. Based on 32 mil, right, exactly. Yep. So just to go further with this particular unit, if I edit it, here's now the doors being shown here. I can delete the door here, or I can change its type of door. And then here, this is set up with a square raised panel, but there's other possible doors that I have profiles. And you, you control your profile, so you're going to add these yourself. And depending on the profile, if it was slab, my only insert, which really isn't an insert, is slab, right? Slab is slab. But if I'm a raised panel, I have some other options here. So I can do a clear glass insert and just update the door, and it's going to make it clear glass. And now, you know, you look at that, it's a pretty, again, it's, you know, it's a nice looking clear glass door. Okay, other things um, to show you here is we do obstructions. We have, you know, vents and outlets and switches. So you pop a vent on there. It's just going to left justify a vent down there. And you would just go ahead and edit it. So if it's a 12 by 12, oops, it's a 12 by 12 vent. And then maybe it's um, 24 inches off the ground and it's six inches from the left. So you just do that. And it's going to shape it and place it. And our obstructions are really for uh, visual purposes only. They don't stop you from doing something. So if this vent, in fact, was behind the drawers, so well, that's that's where the vent is. And in reality, that, that is where it is. So you, if you build over it, you're building over it. We don't stop you from, from doing that. Um, we have materials. This is where you can place a piece of material anywhere, uh, including slat wall, if you want to put slat wall on your thing. And these three boxes really dictate how the piece of material is placed. If you add a piece of material this way, it's going to lay like a shelf. If you put it this way, it's going to be on the wall like a cleat. And if you put it in this way, it's going to be a vertical panel. So let's just look at what that looks like. If I do a cleat, it's going to pop a little cleat right down there. But I can reshape that cleat. And let's say I want to name this. Let's say you want to build a mirror for a customer, for example. So I'm going to make it a 72-inch tall, 24 wide. Let's bring it off the wall six inches. Uh, let's bring it up 12 inches. and here, you can either leave it the same color as the closet, or you might want to pick a different color. If you leave it the same color as the closet, then if you change the closet color, the material will change with it. If you pick a particular color, like I'm going to pick, let's say, candlelight, then it's going to stay candlelight regardless, unless you, unless you come back in here and change it. So here, um, you can, again, pick what kind of material. Now, slab would be your uh, placing material, but we also give you the drawer fronts. And this will allow you to add drawers to, or, or I'm sorry, door fronts to like false panels on the edge of islands or false panels at the end of a run. So you can place a door panel anywhere you want. In this case, I'm going to change this insert to a mirror. What I've actually just done is build a, build a mirror on the wall, as you can see. Joe, if I can interrupt again, we've got a couple mm -hmm. questions. Um, the first one is, can one color be used for the majority of a closet, but then drawer fronts be a separate color? Yes, drawer fronts is one of the options. So you can come down here and you can pick a drawer color. That's what that stands for. And you can change them and all the fronts will change. Excellent. And they're separate from doors. So doors and, and drawers can be separate. And can you individually change each drawer? So in your tower, no. there are numbered 
Okay, so nothing. it's all or nothing. All or in, nothing right now. So in, in, in this case, yeah. in this case, if you did it, it would change really on this wall only. So if you wanted to change all your drawers, you would go back to the the main page and do that same command, and then it would change all the drawers on all the walls. Excellent. Okay. Uh, number two, what logic is in place to let the scoop drawer operate behind the doors where the hinges are? Uh, yeah, that's a good point. That was a bad example. There is no logic. So. Okay. Well, you did say it won't allow you to do things mm -hmm. like obstructions won't You're right. prevent you there from are doing certain it. Things, there mm -hmm. are certain things that we do, like there are certain things we do that um, will, will um, stop you. Good example is um, if I take this uh, unit here that's now a floor unit and I make it deeper than the unit next to it, which has drawers. So if I go ahead and I make this a deeper Maybe I make this 18 inches deep. <clears throat> We're going to catch a little error message here that says double verticals may be needed. And that's because this half overlay drawer needs to have a panel the same. I think you guys know what I'm trying to say here, right? You see this panel has to be here in the drawer unit to catch the drawer face. Yep. That's why another panel is needed. So there are certain rules like that that are um, that will help you and your designer from making mistakes, so you don't you know end up putting a deeper panel where when you go to shut your door it's actually four inches from being shut when it hits the panel. Yes. Okay. Uh, for a software guy, you definitely know a lot about closets. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I had uh, uh, as um, a lot of people know, I. I have been in software all my life, but back in the early 2000s, I had a customer who was a closet, made closets here in New Jersey, and he asked me to build a website for him uh, to compete against Easy Closets, which if you're familiar with that, it's a homeowner uh, web-based tool. And we were gonna go uh, have ease on everything. And so I invested my time to build a software, learned a lot about closets during that time. And then uh, when we launched and started getting the orders, he ended up going out of business. So um, I was sort of, uh, stuck not stuck but had a closet business dropped in my lap and then i stuck with that for a good 10 or 12 years and learned and dealt with a lot of customers and building their closets so come up with a lot of knowledge uh from all that time so it's been uh it's been interesting yeah fantastic it's good to good to see not just the software guy um one more i actually have two questions but i'm not sure how to ask one so one is can are corner shelves an option yeah so corners, um, they are an option. I'm gonna probably, let me just pop back, see if I have it. I'm just gonna pop a quick um, design in. This won't, won't take long at all. Let me just pop this in real quick. And so the idea with, with um, you kind of want the pre-fill off for a corner. So I'm just gonna make a corner unit like this, like this, and like this. And then I'm gonna go, and I'm gonna go. <laughs> I kind of rich choose my walls, continue, start. Okay, so here I have my design. So if I go on the back wall and I say, okay, I want to add a corner, I'm just going to add and it's going to be corners. And we support L-shaped and we support uh, pi. So if I put a left corner shelf in there, it's going to pop in. And then if I put on the right side, maybe I put a, now you see once I put a left one in, I can't put another left one in, but let's do a right pie shelf. And so you see this is, if I look at this in the overhead, you'll see what we have going on. So we have a L shelf on this side and we have a pie shelf going on over here. And what we can do with these, so the L shelf, since I'm on the back wall and if I edit this, I'm actually editing the right side, the right wing, if you will. So if I wanna make this right wing like 30 inches and I wanna make its depth maybe 12 and I submit that, that's just changing this wing. If I go over to wall one, that is still set to the, the original size. So I can then edit this one and say, okay, let's make this one, I don't know, 36 inches and leave it at 16. So it is, has now shaped that, as you see, it has shaped it that way. So now you have, when you look at your design, that's what you have in the corner. And the uh, pie shells are the work the other direction, work it the other way. So with a pie shelf, you're a little more restricted in your sizes with pie shelves because, of course, you're, you can't just change it. So you have these choices, right? Because as you make it wider, it's got to be wider on both sides, and it makes it uh, deeper as well. So if you change it to, to that depth, it's going to go ahead and stretch everything appropriately and make it, make it that size. Okay. I got a couple more questions if you're Yeah, sure. Interested. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 
I, I asked Matt, and maybe Matt, you want to write in again, he, but he asks, could you add intermittent verticals to fixed shelves uh, and further custom design tools? So I don't really know what to ask on that one. Um, well, you can't, so uh, I'm not sure. I can tell you that um, we can add double, you can double a vertical if you want. So let's say you're doing lighting, you might need to have some more space to do lighting. So you can force a double vertical in. Um, you can put vertical feet on. Um, as far as splitting like inside here, uh, you can do a, you know, you can Ooh. do a vertical divider. Okay, I think I got, is... he just clarified it. Okay. Um, to make scoop drawers work behind doors. So say you had a 30 inch unit and then you wanted to add, um, right. you know, another vertical in there. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. So no, not we don't do that right now. We don't we don't get that granular on the scoop box. But yes, you know, being able to put in spacers on on drawers, um, scoop boxes to go behind, and baskets and whatever else you might want to put behind doors is certainly something we're going to be adding in the future. Right. It looks good to show the customer though to scoop drawer behind the door, but yeah, maybe the engineer. Yeah, has to they'll be you know they'll see it and they'll know what it is. It doesn't mean it's functionally correct here, but yeah, it's uh that is uh, that is okay. what's going on there. Um. um we got another one. Uh -huh. Let me just make my screen bigger here and get the whole question. Um, Peter Martins asks, oh, I can't see the full question. Is it possible for a user to add additional accessories into Closet Pro, or do these have to be programmed in? So say like sidelines, no. I think. Yeah. Nope. yeah, so you have, um, I'm just going to skip and go go to the uh, accessories. So you, add, accessories are added. So there's, so the, wow. there's, there, let me back up a second. There's two types of places to add accessories. If you are in the, um, if you're in one of these tools, one of these, one of these uh, units, and I'll make it the right size for an accessory. The currently the only accessories that we have that go into the design tool are the tag accessories. So if I wanted to go ahead and add one of these baskets in here, um, and then maybe put in a, a shoe thing above it like that, uh, and I guess that doesn't really make sense. So we'll pull that out. Uh, I can do that, and it will show up here in the design, and it will price, and it will make it onto the cut list. And if you don't like that finish, you can change the finish of your tag over here by going, I want oil red bronze, let's say instead, and it will just change the color of your tag accessory. And if you look at that in 3D, there, there they are. They're in there in 3D. And if you render them, they come out beautifully. So these accessories, we worked closely with Tag and Hayflip to do these. We will be increasing that that uh, volume of accessories. These were, were done as a first time trial and they work great and people love them. So we're going to continue doing that with like bell racks, tie racks, those kinds of things. In the meantime, uh, in order to add accessories to your closet, you really add them after this, after the fact. So when the closet is, is finished, you would then go to add accessories. And then here is a whole selection. These are kind of in the demo, they're kind of preloaded, uh, accessories, but you can add or subtract or, we can give you an empty accessory page and you could just add your own. They're very easy to add. They're added through the admin screen and you would just basically put in um, the name, the SKU, the price, a picture and a description. And as soon as you do that, they become available for your for your designers to use. And then if you want to add one, you just say add and it basically adds it. And you can change the, the update the quantity. And so now we have four belt racks being thrown in to that design. So it doesn't show it in the design, but it, it will it's show up on show. the parts list. That's right. So it's right here. Right. You can see that we've added those. So if you, when you look at the cut list, you're going to see that, and I'll come back to, I'll just show you a quick cut list, but I'll come back to that later. But on the cut list, you can see that it's going to uh, list the parts. And then at the bottom, it's going to show you the accessory. So it did pull in the two tag accessories as well, as well as the four bell racks. On that same adding the accessories thing, if say for instance, you wanted to add a charge because you're working in a condominium mm -hmm. and you don't want the customer to necessarily know, you can you can add it as you yep. know whatever accessory or something. It would show up there as just the miscellaneous charge. Um, and, right, and, but we have an easier way of doing that. And this goes ah. back to the original question of individual markups. You can see here we have a couple icons, right? So this is to clone a job, which I showed you how to do. This is just to rename it. This is to send it to another designer. So if you have a, a uh, another, I'm sorry, another customer. Uh, this is for ordering parts, but this one here allows you to put in a dollar amount or a markup amount on this closet only. So if you were going to a place that you know is going to cost you 500 extra dollars to climb stairs or whatever, you can just go ahead and update that. And that price is just going to pop $500. That's, 
that five hundred dollars does not show up anywhere else. Like it's it's, it's not on the cut list. It's not anywhere. It's nice. just built into this price. So if you go there, you'll see there it is. And if you don't want to mark up, you're going to want to knock it off. And not that anybody would want to, but hypothetically, if we wanted to add a discount, same spot, just a negative. You you could you could um, yes, if you wanted to do it per room, that's where you would do that. Um, when I get to proposals, I'll show you how we we allow you to do discounts and proposals. It's probably uh, probably nicer. Move on to that. Yeah, let me, all right, let me move into that. So let's talk. Uh, let me show you how proposals work. Let's say we take these two AC SP jobs and we're done with them. We want to present them to a customer. I'm going to create a new proposal. This is going to be your logo, your customer's ID, and my information. And here's the two jobs, right? Someone has accessories, one doesn't. And I have kind of automatically built in discount, but I can change that to a different type of discount. And if it's a percentage amount, let's say we're going to do 18%, the number is going to calculate by itself. If it's if you want to do a discount that is a dollar amount, you would just leave the dollar sign and then you would type in minus $500. And it's all calculating as you go. So you have eight lines to do additions or subtractions. So here you might want to do installation and charge, you know, 600 bucks. It's just adding and going all the way down the row. Here you have some things in your proposal that you can turn on or off measurements, turn on or off renders, turn on and off whether they can print it, things like that. Put a disclaimer text. This is all very powerful stuff that uh, we can review at some other time. But if I save this proposal, what it does is it takes those two jobs that we had up top and it puts them down in this proposal. We consider this somewhat of a formal document, so you can't edit these anymore. If you needed to edit these, let's say the customer called and says, I'd like to see them both in a different color, you can clone them. So let's say they want to go antique white in both of these. You just rename them and what happens is this original proposal stays there for history purposes and now you have two of them up here that you could then open and change to antique white. So you can see how quick, so you would change both of those. You would go here, you would say, use the last proposal setting. You say, create new, you see it pulls all the old settings in. You say, update, you now have two proposals. How quick was that? About 45 seconds or less to go ahead and respond to a customer who says, I love the proposal. I just want to see it with a minor change. You can literally tell them, hang on the phone for a second, do what I just did, tell them to refresh their screen and they would see the new proposal. So when you send, when you email the proposal to somebody, they get this link right here. I'm going to show you what that link looks like. I log off and just, when they click on that link, they don't log into anything. It just automatically loads up a page with your logo, the customer information, your designer information, and here's all the proposals available. You see these two here have expired because you can put expiration links, expiration times on the links. So here are the two we just did. If I view it, you can see they're all cleaned up. The customer has the ability to see View it in 2D. The customer can see it in interactive 3D. This is super cool. So sitting at home, your customer can literally walk through the closet and look around just like you did in the private the privacy of their own home without anybody, you know, hanging over them or whatever. They can just do all that kind of looking around and whatnot. And then this last option here is options and accessories, and this gives them a picture view of everything they've done. So there's no mistake as to what colors, what accessories, picture view of all the options in that job. If they like this thing, they can this proposal, they can accept it. Your designer gets an email saying, you know, Mr. Brown accepted proposal 702. If they were paying online, they would go to the terms and conditions page and then to the final uh, payment page to make their payment. All right, let me go back and show you the PDF proposal that we do. So on this, on these jobs as well, you can create PDFs. And the way you would do that is you would, uh, you can click on this PDF button and it will generate a PDF. And what the PDFs look like is, and if I just do this one here, I'll show you what this looks like. So this, when you click this PDF, it will basically create a PDF in about a minute and a half, and it will come up like this. It has a, it has a, a, a title page with it's going to have your logo and your address, and you have access to change this information if you want. And then it walks through, and it gives you 
overhead views, technical drawings. It gives you uh, 2D views, what we call 2D through views. It gives you 3D views like that, and it even gives you renders. Wow. A render view like that. Can you, so these are, go ahead. can you edit those views so they would only see, say, the rendering yes. and not the elevations? Yeah. Yep. When you create it, you have the option. So if I go to if I go to create a PDF, it's going to stop. And right here, you say, do you want technical drawings? Yes or no. Do you want system views? Yes or no. User views, nice. renders. So the renders, let me pop in there real quick. I know I'm running out of time. but um, So in this closet that I have here, that is just a five-wall closet. If I go into the 3D view and I maybe I turn these first and fifth wall off, and put some clothes on it. You'll see that we're 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 in a closet here that has you know a couple windows, a door going outside, which might be a little unusual. Um, you know, shoes, whatever. If I want to take a render of this, I would take a snapshot. I would say, give me a snapshot, standard view, you know, view number one, and submit the render. That's how you do renders. You frame your picture, you submit the render. If you want, you can do a 360 view, where if you do a 360 view, it becomes an interactive 3D view, and I'll show you what that looks like. So, you see what this looks like here. This is what the render looks like. So you can see mirror doors on this one, outside door, windows. If I look to the left, because I did a render viewing it from the left, look to the right, and then you have your 360 view. And the 360 view is um, basically putting you in the center of the room and then calculating uh, the view around you so that you can, with your mouse, you can hold the mouse down and you can spin yourself around. Or if you have an iPad or, or a smartphone and you view this on there, as you turn your iPad and your smartphone, the view will change. So you can literally stand your customer in the center of their closet and have them turn around and they could visualize what that closet's gonna look like. That's a great renders, rendering. Yeah, renders are done on our servers. It takes only a few minutes. It gets attached to your job automatically. You get an email that says the render's ready. If you already sent the proposal to the customer, the render gets attached anyway, um, and there's no extra charge for renders. They're included in the price. Yeah, any, I think maybe questions, Sean, if there's any? Uh, yeah, there's one. There's uh, It says very interested in the CV export and how that works. Oh, I can show you that real quick. So Cabinet Vision Export is one of our exports. So we, um, let me show you, I have uh, an example here. So here's a, a job that, is a little more unusual as an inside corner. You can see it's got some doors and things like that. So this is a design in Cabinet Vision. I mean, in Closet Pro. If I want to take that to Cabinet Vision, there is, I have to just log in as the administrator and go into that customer. So let me just drill down in there so I can get to that file. So here is my Cabinet Vision export. That's going to generate an ORDX file, as you see right down here. From there, I'm going to go to my uh, cabinet vision. It has to be uh, 11 or greater. And I'm going to go ahead and open that ORDX file. So instead of a CVJ, I'm looking for the ORDX. And this is, yep, 456. That's it right there. This takes about a minute. And what it does is it brings in all the customer information. It draws all the walls. It puts all the panels and the and the parts inside, um, and you can see it just as if you sat down and drew this yourself. We're waiting. Somebody has a question yep. about uh, yep. more accessories in detail. Can you add lighting? Lighting is right around the corner. Um, we're working with a 3D team right now to do lighting for both uh, the interactive 3D and the renders. Uh, it'll probably be in the renders before it's in the interactive 3D, but it's certainly coming before the end of the year. Can you tell us, say, would you be using like Hefla or Revishelf, the Tresco lighting? Well, do you have a well, preference? What we would do, I think what we would do is we're going to do um, track lighting, not track lighting, strip lighting, like down the vertical panels and puck lights under shelves. So you would be able to say, okay, in this unit, put strips on both verticals and put a puck light on a third shelf, that kind of thing. And then we would just, we don't necessarily, we won't necessarily choose the version or the product you're using. We're just going to, um, you know, show the representation of that. You can use whoever you want to use. Right. Cool. So here you can see the design. If I go to the, to the job file, here's Bob Davis 
and all his information is brought in. Here, if I pop this into a 3D view, you can see everything is in there as we had in our job. If you go to the elevation view, you can see this is wall one. There's some double hangs, some shoe shelves, some drawers, one around the corner. So if I go into here, you can see how this is a fixed shelf. This is a hanging area. So it's it's basically pulled the whole thing in just as if we drew it ourselves. Um, and if you go onto the report, you'll see all the the options, all the parts are there. So that's how that's how that works. Yeah, we also uh, export to other companies. So um, what's included in Closet Pro is your a standard cut list, which is the CSV file. There's another shop cut list, which is also a CSV file. There's a pick list, which is again another CSV file for hardware and one for accessories. As far as exporting to other tools, we do, as you just saw, to CV11. We also export to Cutright, Eurosoft, All Moxie. Uh, we can create any custom formatted CSV file you want. And we're, we're currently working with other companies um, to interface to their tool as well. Nice. So uh, I won't ask you what it costs unless you want to tell us. Um, maybe uh, It's on our website. There's no, there's no secret. I actually oh, think... Okay. Uh, here you go. So it's $1,500 is to get started. It's your only, um, there's really only two fees that are that are up front, and that is $1,500, which gives you access to a branded version of Closet Pro. You get your preloaded colors put in there. We give you a, a unit catalog, um, gives you the ability to do all your, all your work from the admin side. You get your standard cut list, and you get some training online as well. Uh, if you need a custom export, we do charge $750 to build that custom export for you, and that includes a CV exporter, anyone you want to do, whether it's a CSV or XML or whatever. Oops, I'm sorry. Just dropped it right out of that. Hang on a second. Okay. Um, and then the monthly, the ongoing monthly fee, if you don't have a custom export, it's $200 a month, gives you the admin key and the designer key. So if you're a small one person shop or you just have one designer, you can use Closet Pro for $200 per month. If you have a custom export, it's an, it's an extra $100, so it's $300 per month. Additional designers go in at $100 a month or $50 per month once you get past the sixth designer. Uh, we do have a version of Closet Pro called Draw, which is $75 a month, but you don't get an admin key. So it's basically all the functionality of Closet Pro, but it's our colors and it doesn't really do real-time pricing but mm. it does everything else so you have an option if you want even if you want to try for a couple months you could do it for 75 dollars a month and then if you really like it you can you can decide to go with the with the full version and this is up on our website so uh, our website is cloudsprosoftware.com so you can go up there and um, see our this exact same copy to write off the site so all the information is up there about draw and other things as well Maybe a silly question, but you said earlier it's browser-based, and it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, iPad, iOS, true. Windows uh, yeah. doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, we do. We do recommend Chrome or Firefox as the browsers. Uh, Safari is a little, um, a little behind with the 3D technology, uh, believe it or not. So uh, it doesn't work as well. So, but if you could download Chrome for for iPad and and or Firefox, they both work really well. Yep. Excellent. All um, right. Matt Peru says, thanks for your time. Sure. Awesome presentation. It was. Blew me away. Thanks, uh, guys. I've kind of nerded out on this software thing for a bit. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> I was impressed. Very nice. Very Thank intuitive. You, and I said earlier, you definitely know a lot about closets. Yeah. Thank you. Well, I guess I'll say if anybody, uh, I don't know if your contact info is up there or if anybody wants, mm -hmm. um, we can get you Joe's contact info if you mm -hmm. want. Uh, if you guys want have more questions, want to speak to him directly want to buy the software um, so this is our website and at the bottom of the website is our phone number that you can give us a call cool right here are you and, and you do every year you are at the closet show we do we do the closet summit we do AWFS we do the IWF and we do the closet expo so those are the shows we do every year so um, three shows a year and nice. uh, and on our website, cool. you can see some more videos. And we have training videos as well if you want to watch them. So um, and some of our customers that we are, we're working with. You mentioned, uh, well, I guess you've shown on the slide, two hours of uh, kind of tech support. 
Mm -hmm. People want more. Can they buy more? Or they can buy more. Typically, we don't charge for online training. I mean, we've never ever charged for online training. If you want us to come out to your office, we do charge you. But if you just sure. want to do a, a brush up or you know, bring some designers into a room and have us do something online, we never charge. Um, I, I encourage you to talk to some of our current customers. I think we provide some of the best customer support there is. Uh, we're quick. We uh, always answer the phone. So um, I think it's you'll find it refreshing if you do work with us. Yeah. And it looks pretty intuitive. So I think once you kind of play with it for a bit, if you understand clauses, it should be pretty straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of curious to try it on an iPad to, uh, mm -hmm. to see, cause I have to bring a computer now to sales calls. Um, yeah. And iPads are just slick. Everybody likes those. Yeah. 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 There's a little pinching and whatnot going on, you know, <laughs> you know, with the controls, but, uh, I, we do have designers out there and, and they do, uh, they do use them. So, um, you know, it's it's. Uh, I personally prefer a mouse, but for guys who can use their fingers and move it around, it works. It works great. Nice. Uh, cool. Well, unless anybody has any other questions, maybe we will wrap it up. Um, again, you can always reach out to Joe privately. Um, Absolutely. And answer more questions that way. Other than that, thanks, Joe. Really All informative. Right, hey, no problem. Thanks so much for your time. You guys have a good day. Cool. See you later. Right. Yep. Bye bye. Once again, I never know how to end these things.